We talked in the earlier lesson in this section about how you could use Nectar's uh, vocal assistance unmask feature to deal with masking, but there's another way to deal with that. And I'm going to show you how to do that uh, here specifically with these two keys. So I've got one keyboard uh, track here. Let's just listen to it. So it's like an electric piano. But then we also have a real piano, right? So we, we, we probably have a lot of masking going on here where it's a little hard to hear the difference between these two instruments. Now, sometimes, of course, that's desirable, but I'm gonna use it as an example here to see how can we use uh, the masking features within the EQ module of Neutron to start addressing this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is again, after Relay, I'm not gonna replace Relay, I'm gonna add an EQ module, a Neutron 3 EQ module, and I'm gonna add it to my keys. So I'm gonna call this uh, the Mark. And then I'm gonna add this here to Piano. I'm going to, after my Sculptor, I am going to add an EQ here as well, and I'm gonna call it Piano. I guess I should probably call these piano and mark EQ so it's clear to me when I'm doing any mixing what I'm what I'm uh, changing. Okay, so now what's going to happen here is I want to be able to see the effects in my uh, EQ for the keys. I want to be able to see what's happening in my piano, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose the piano EQ. And then in my EQ for the piano track, I'm going to set right here where it says masking, I'm going to select down here the mark EQ, right? So now this plugin is being shown in here and this plugin is being shown in here. And, and what exactly is being shown? Okay, so let's, let's take a look. Let's play these two together. So what I can see here is that my piano is being masked quite heavily by the mark. And that's what this strong orange tells me. And it tells me that, you know, it, it's happening in this mid range. Now I can see a slightly more defined picture. If I go ahead and grab this sensitivity and I turn it up, I'll notice that I start to get this sort of histogram appearance up here. I'm going to go back and just play these again. So these are showing me, this histogram now is, is showing me, you know, specific frequencies. Now I want to be clear that you do not need to go ahead and try and fix every instance of masking. That's not the idea. The idea here is to just kind of get a general picture. What I like to do is use the inverse link. So in the inverse link, I can actually grab this and you'll notice that what I'm doing in the piano here has been inverted over here. Right. So as I drag this down or up, the other changes. Right. So now we can see that the masking over here is significantly less. I'm going to go ahead and just change the width on it a little bit. And go ahead and play that again and look at my masking. So all I've done basically here is I've pulled out some of the, uh, the mids here on my mark in order to reduce the masking in my piano. And so now both instruments are a little more audible, but I could also make the decision that I want to take my mark and I'm, I'm going to actually raise it up here to make it cut through in a, in a frequency that the piano is not uh, really occupying so much. like that. But instead of having to flip back and forth between two different EQs, uh, I can just link these two and then I can use the inverse link feature to, uh, to modify them both. I can also see the orange line is basically the other plugin, right? So when I'm looking at the orange line here on my piano EQ, the orange line is representing what's happening on my mark. And 
vice versa in the mark EQ, what I'm seeing as orange is actually the frequency response of my piano. So the orange line is what the other guy's doing. The gray line is what your actual track is doing. So using inverse link, using this nice metering, using the masking and the histogram, it just makes it super easy. In a few minutes, I've targeted some meaningful frequencies. I can see it. I can hear it makes the job a lot easier. Now in the next lesson, I want to talk about balancing consistency in the drums, especially when it comes to transients. And compression is usually the tool we use, but the transient shaper is also really helpful. So that's coming up in the next lesson.